What up, Brandon Rockers? Captain America, Civil War. Okay, so I'm going to do something interesting. Right now we're in spoiler-free territory. When I bring in the uh, the bucket, you'll see it in a minute or so. Not a minute. You'll see it when it comes. We'll just say that. So this movie, it is first, foremost, a Captain America movie. And instead of the political aspect, it focuses on the more personal aspects. And that was nice. It was easier to get a hold of that way. Political stuff was just... I mean, when it came to the comic... The thing about this movie is, you know, you got to go into this not completely thinking that they're going to completely go by the book of the actual storyline from the comics, which is what I got it. was the first I got into for the comics, dude. I'm not going to lie. So for this movie, it is... You've got to know... They, for the Civil War aspect of things, for the most, for some aspects of it, they do justice. Though the parts that Spider-Man was a part of, big in the comic books, that winds up going to another character, and I will get to that later. And yes, without being super spoilery, the new guys are the ones that stand out. I already mentioned one of them earlier, so but I will get further into that later when the bucket comes. So, it's his first foremost Cap America movie. Iron Man does play a huge part in it as well, hence the Civil War aspect, of course. But And then Chadwick Bowen, I think is his name. Yeah, Bowen, Bowen, I think. Wow. Dude's done plenty of stuff, I mean, with all these biopics and everything. And I'm looking forward to... I'm looking forward... Oh, God. <laughs> you know what? It's It rocks all the way, guys. What can I say? <sighs> Other than, you know, that's the short end of it. I'm just going to say that right now. It rocks all the way. Where do I rank it in my in MCU movies? I mean, it's a game changer. A lot of people are saying it's The Empire Strikes Back for the MCU. I don't know about that, but it has, a, it has its moments where it gets there. In fact, even going as far as to have a little reference in there, which I will get to in a minute. But I'm not sure I could say it correctly because I've... or or whatever, but... I mean, it was very nice to say, but you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the review where time I'm going to get into spoiler territory. All right? If you haven't seen it, don't see it now. Go. Just fucking go, okay? You're missing out on experience. Do they play it safe? Sure. It's safe. Well, it's fucking Disney. I mean, you should have already expected that a little bit. Especially after the way they handled Age of Ultron, but... Yeah, they did, and they almost come this close with it, you know. But Okay, that's it. Spoiler time. Not this bucket of theater, guys. I'm trying to remember what theater it was. Oh, yeah, it was at Werenberg. And that's how I got this. Anyway, spoiler time. Spoiler time. Time for spoilers. Okay. All right, guys. Yes, as I said before, it is first and foremost a cap. This is where you know Marvel is good with their films, because at least when they titled them. At least when they title the damn freaking movies. They do it right. They fucking do it right. First and foremost. Captain America movie. Look at that. Captain America. That's what the movie is first and foremost. Despite the bold letters of Civil War. Which is in there. But it's really a Captain America movie. First and foremost, the Civil War aspect of the things, 
though a huge story plot point in this movie. And for anyone who's read the comics, the first one, you know, they're coming out with a second one, which... Compared to the original, which this one kind of seems to go more off of, that other one is, like, hell, the story they did the story for this one, if that was the second one, fine by me. But it would have been the same rehashing as the version from 2000s, which was the good old days. I'm just going to tell you, man. You are going to severely... This movie is enjoyable. It's awesome. I mean, damn, Cap is just... The action is nice. I feel like there's a little bit of a sh shakiness in the cinematography. The cinematography, it's a bit shaky, but I think even the Bourne films are a bit shaky. I don't even remember nearly as much shakiness the, for the Russo brothers or cinematography or something when it came to Winter Soldier. But even with that being said, fuck it. Fuck that. It's not like Alex Cross bad or anything. Because if that were the case, that would have fucked the movie over. Thank God it wasn't, man. Thank God. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know if I should pick this over Winter Soldier or not, guys. That's, that's a tough... I almost think I should because it gets better, even better and better with age. And anyone who says Age of Ultron... I mean, Age of Ultron, maybe it was kind of fun, but for me, I felt like I may as well just went back and watched, like, the... the Avengers cartoon that they had recently come out with a few years back. I would have rather been watching that because it was about felt the Age of Ultron felt like the same thing as that. It had that same feeling. It's just live action for them. And but compared to what the first Avengers was, which was fen phenomenally written and everything, this film makes up for that and makes up for that part of it in spades. It serves the purpose of this movie is fantastic. On all and it was great in all cylinders because, and it it exceeds a lot of I don't people's expectations, mine included, especially like when we got to the point where they finally introduced him, Spider Man. The moment Queens hit, like that was another issue for me. Usually they'd have it on a side screen so you could see the scenery better, but for some weird odd freaking reason that I don't understand, the Russos decided to just stamp on this weird bit this nice front all over the damn screen over to the nice scenery and being able to enjoy the cinematography of the scenery don't understand why thought that was weird i don't know if it's because they thought people would be even the backer seats of the theaters might have just been super blind as a bat when it came to the smaller screen shit i don't know i felt like it took up too much space but it wasn't that big of a fucking deal to me, at least. Regardless of that. Wow. <laughs> Sp Spider-Man. Tom Holland, you have found the perfect balance between Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Like, you have a similar look to Tobey Maguire's. Except, like, if you were a teenager. Except... With the exception of the fact that he, you add on, there's certain aspects of the personalities that they had down pat on Raimi's, that Raimi had down pat with McGuire, down pat with Raimi, and certain aspects of things. Most especially in terms of just the character himself, how he's developed by the time of Spider Man 2, Amazing Spider Man 2, with Andrew Garfield. Especially when it came to Gwen Stacy chemistry. I don't know if they're going to do Gwen Stacy or whatever. I forgot the actress's name, but Spidey fans, awkward. You're going to be awkward. Like you, ha It's even more awkward when you're right next to Tony. And it's like, I, it's not that she isn't bad. It's just Tris or anything. It's just, and it's a different take on Aunt May, but it's not one that I think people will be very open and welcoming to it as Spider-Man fans because it's just... When you think at May, you don't think cougar material. You don't. You fucking don't. So it's kind of weird to have a younger Aunt May. Like, 40s Aunt May. Cougar material. Like, 
it was just and just having to buy Tony Stark. It's like you and even he was joking about it. I barely even noticed the joke because there's already laughing more and smiling more and paying more focus of attention towards Tom Holland Spider Man. And we see that what he used to look like and everything. I love this scene, and that's what made me anticipate this scene more, is because earlier in the movie, Tony is just... Apparently things with him and Pepper did not work out so well. And he's trying to do this one thing just to make himself feel better for all the stuff that the guilt, but it turns out that she meets this one lady whose son had died in Sokovia, which was the place that burnt... That with the whole Ultron issue. And I love how they established throughout both the Avengers, what happened in Avengers, Winter Soldier, and both Avengers, Winter Soldier, and Age of Ultron. Those incidents. Whew, shoot. Ugh. Long day. Anyway, with those incidents how they affected, and the last incident that they had done earlier in the film with Crossbones, which is underutilized, they go on this little mission before they get to the cat, and something happens to where the Crossbones basically suicide bombs himself and tries to put him up in the atmosphere, but by the time he blows up, it's too late, and they take out part of a building. And, she's fr and of course, she's freaking out, and that's why she's reserved her powers a little bit throughout the rest of the movie, even though she's OP as hell, and so is Vision. You know, they, they do as much justice as they possibly can, guys. I'm not, I'm not kidding. They do as much justice as they possibly, possibly can. It's just... And, and to make them OP, Hawkeye, Hawkeye kind of comes out of nowhere, really. I thought they, f with Age of Ultron, that was the thing about Age of Ultron that ma made it work, despite certain other little things. Um, and that was, you know, he was actually great in this movie. And he does show up, and compared to his time in, eight, in, in the first Avengers, it's clearly better than that. But his appearance and whatnot doesn't really hold up. Near I mean, his quips are nice, but they don't hold up nearly as much or as fluently and as as smooth as they did in Age of Ultron, for some odd reason. But I, that's not really... But the thing is, again, this is a solely, first and foremost, Captain America movie. They aren't trying to focus as much. If they do, they make sure they focus on the newcomers completely. And the guys that they already had mentioned throughout Age of Ultron and how they fleshed out, they wanted to give them... They gave us a little bit more on those guys. Just a little bit of an understanding and a form of chemistry between these two. This chemistry wasn't as forced. I don't know if you give that credit. That one wasn't forced, though. The only other thing that seemed kind of forced, and honestly also awkward, but kind of made up for it because when they used the humor aspect of it, especially the reveal. Elizabeth Campbell's character, she was the Agent 31 or whatever in Winter Soldier. She's apparently Peggy's daughter. It makes me wonder if they if they do another Agent Carter, where will that fit in? Like I don't, and though I'm hearing like Carter might not be making it for another season, but it would be nice to see them touch up on it. And it's clear that means that if she's his daughter, then in this regards for the Agent Carter series, this confirms that the one dude that she was with in the show, that was one of the hey guys in the early in the SRS, which or SSR or whatever which is was like the early stages of S.H.I.E.L.D. They did get together and had a baby. And that was a beautiful blonde-ass woman. Who even caps. It's just what makes it awkward. It's like you're kind of screwing with, you know, your your ex-lover's daughter. It's And you're like kind of technically 100... You, you've, the only thing that was okay with it was just how was the reactions in the car from them, from <laughs> from Bucky and Sam were, the characters I'm talking, were brilliant, and it just added more to the humor. Like, it knew when to cut into the humor. It didn't ruin the dark aspects of it, but when it had humor, it cut into it perfectly. And yeah, I mean, 
Wow. And it's, there's this scene. The thing is, it's not so much the scene where in the commercials that say, or the trailers that say, where he's like, when he cheats, says, but Bucky's my friend, he's like, so sad. That's not what cuts deep. It's what leads up to that point. Before that point, that cut, that is really the cut deep throat thing that just, the more you think about it, I mean, a lot of people will say that he's an underused villain. Um, Baron Zemo, but he's, and the way they handled him, he's not exactly close to the version in the comics, and he doesn't have a costume, blah, blah, blah. It's not like he really needs it. His role is actually maybe not as good as Robert Redford's, but maybe it could be potentially, it, or, but maybe it could potentially be better. The more he listens, the more you watch it, the more you see... Like, though they say that, oh, it's not, he says, oh, it's not about that, but he's, then it turns out in the end, it's, he's full of shit. I think that's what really bothers people, is, you know, he's, he really did, was, did give a shit. And so that's, it makes sense with the phone thing and the messages to complete, like, it's basically him pulling off the, the taken one thing, thing that he does to rem remember who the guy is. And he, but he does it as a means to remember and remind himself why. What I'm doing this for, my motives for why I continue to do this, despite all the problems. Zemo was one of the guys from Sokovia, and he basically was the middleman who basically was speaking for even the audience who have seen these Avenger movies and known, and there's just the other people involved that had were casualties. He spoke for them, in a way, and said, fuck this shit. His role wasn't so much as a mirror, it wasn't so much there is no real clear anta i mean he was technically supposed to be the clear antagonist but he wasn't completely the main meant to be an antagonist he was kind of his antagonizing role was more for what the film called for being that it was more of a psychological thriller it was he was just part of just a psychological aspect getting to the heads of the avengers and destroying them and taking them apart so basically from the way this ends in a way the villain won the villain won. In the safest way they possibly could do it. You know? Because they were about to kill each other. And that's another thing. They don't go that route. They don't go that far. I mean, shit happens. But in terms of someone dying? No. No one dies. Other than the casualties that happened... As they've stated, and of course, T'Chaka, which was supposed to help with T'Challa being Black Panther. Excellent. I am, and even with the mid mid cred scene, pump the fuck up for Black Panther, motherfuckers. Yes, and I'm pumped for Home Spider Man Homecoming, which this basically confirms. In case anyone, that's just the end cred scene. It confirms Spider-Man is legit, legitimately fucking going to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Despite Sony, Marvel has f more control over this now than ever. And hopefully, when the homecoming happens, it's, 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 it's gonna blow... It may blow... When you see this, the best on-screen Spider-Man we've ever seen... He's, like I said, he's truly captures, truly captures what Peter Parker and Spider-Man are, and Spider-Man are about. You know, he, he actually did make up his own web shooters. And this, the banner between him and Stark was perfect. It was just, anytime May, you had that Aunt May show up in the scene, it's just, it was awkward because it's like, usually Aunt May's old, but she's not, she's cougar material. Why do I have to have a boner for Aunt May? That's the thing. As dudes, and even the lesbian chicks are like, who probably are Spider-Man fans. They're gonna just be, it's just gonna be, an, um, I can't even do it right, but, awkward turtle. And how do you, uh, it's awkward turtle, I think is how it's done. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Comment below on that too, but, holy shit. It's just, it's really damn fucking good. The more and more I think about it, and yeah, 
it, it rocks all the way. It's definitely... I don't know if I would pick this. I I seriously almost want to pick this over Deadpool, but I, I go... But I'm not even... I bet, And then again, I just know most people would blasphemy, but I don't know, man. The more you think about it, this movie gets you to think about things a lot more. And it's just... It blows my mind. How they handled this. I mean, they did play it safe. I mean, but... The scene, the big thing, the biggest reveal. We find out about what happened with Tony Stark and his parents had been in a crash. We find out about this one car that had crashed that Winter Soldier was doing on a mission in 1991. And that mission had something to do with creating those soldiers, which the soldiers weren't even the big deal that they made it out to be. So if they had figured out the whole time was to just fuck them all over, then, you know, by that point, they would have just made it up to them and then just took the guy out. You know, that kind of thing. That's probably what how it should have ended will do. Shout out to those guys. Hey, see you guys. You guys are awesome. You make some fun cartoons. Keep it up. Horns up for that. Keep it up. You know, the Deadpool one was underwhelming because, let's face it, the way... Even if there was some truth to how you said it, it just wasn't funny for the obvious fact that, well, the Deadpool film itself was funnier because it was kind of a comedy. So it's like if the film isn't necessarily comedy straight up, then, you know, it's a different story. But in this case, yeah. Anyway. Movies overall, again, I don't know how many times I got to say this. Go see the damn movie. Go fucking see it like right fucking now i mean the time frame this is right now where when i'm reviewing this is late as fuck but still guys go out and review this movie right now i mean this is fucking it's fucking awesome guys it's fucking awesome and just yes i mean the the reveal with the screen at the end where we see the mission and it turns out the people that he went after were the Starks. Or Howard and and them. And he looked at him, it's like, what's up with you, soldier? Does that hurt? Just seeing that and seeing Stark's face, it's like, he's going to kill Bucky. Bucky's right, like... And I mean, even after he just said the whole Manchurian candidate thing, but it's not like it mattered. He was going to kill him. He was, he, I mean, he was going to kill him. He was gonna kill the some bitch, and it's not like you could blame him. But at the same time, Caps even said a point, you know, the Manchurian Candidate bullshit. You know what I mean? You've been brainwashed. You I mean you've been brainwashed to do all these things? You know, it's like and tortured in the process of it. It's like you. It's not like he was forced. He didn't have no choice. I wasn't around. I was fucking frozen carbonite. Of course, the decision they made to do put him on ice again. Right. It was honestly the best they, thing they could do, and even he knew that it was the best thing they could do to keep from harming anyone else, as long as they had this information. And if they were to find out that he was harboring a prisoner, it's like, all right, that's fine, but let's just let them come. Let's see how they fight, fend off against us. <laughs> and I love the fact, oh man, this is a perfect, perfect segue into what we're going to get out of fucking Black Panther, man. But before that, we're going to see Doctor Strange... Don't know where he'll fit into this whole thing, but I'm not expecting it to be better, a, be a better movie than Civil War, but my gosh, I mean, despite Batman v Superman, Marvel, at least with, between this and what f the Fox-owned properties have done with Deadpool and with this, it is a good year to be a fan of superheroes, to be a fan of superheroes, whether comic book. Or in this case, movies. It's a great year for that. This movie proves that in of itself. Whether the other films will live up to it or not. And even if, even if Batman v Superman is the worst we're going to have, you know, it, you know it's going to be a great year, guys. It's going to be a great and absolutely fantastic year. And I can't, I can't wait, dude. It's it's fantastic. Everything you've expected exceeds. 
Spider-Man owns it. The fights are great. His quips are great. He looks the part. He acts the part. Holland, I I hope you continually nail it out of the park. I hope that the homecoming is great. It's fantastic. I need to see that. I'm not sure I want to see more Aunt, hot Aunt May because it just. I mean, I, we we're. I mean, I'm still gonna find this. I mean, once I I prepared myself, you know, but it's gonna be awkward as shit to just have boners, teenage kids, and fucking Spider-Man fans just somehow all of a sudden have boners for Aunt May. It's just. Odd as, it's gonna be odd as fuck. <laughs> the man of a teenager, he works, he's still young at the game. I like that, they prove that. As much as that part of me wanted to just hate, just, ugh, ugh, with how they, how he was a cat, but how he handles himself with that, all these guys, like, hey, guy, how you doing? It's like he's seeing his like, best heroes and everything. It's like, and then you're wrong. It's like, I say dangerous. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, well, you're dangerous. Like, oh, maybe Cap has a point. <laughs> he's like, well, maybe Tony has a point. <laughs> it's great. Just the banter back and forth. Just, just wonderful. For the few minutes he has between being Spider-Man and being as Peter Parker, he's perfect. The kid is perfect. The webbing. What he does. We don't need an origin story. We're not going to have to have one. Because we don't. And I'm glad, guys. I'm glad to have seen this movie. And I kind of want to agree with Stuckman. I mean, this movie is an A-plus material thing. I mean, it's horns up all the way. And... And since we're in spoiler, not in spoiler free territory, let my junk wishes it could bring up the horns for this movie. It was, I mean, it, it, I mean, we're all, all of us in all shapes, in all shapes and forms, and are going to enjoy this fucking movie. If yeah. <laughs> Ugh, Cap. Well, he's not, uh, technically, I guess he's not going to be Cap anymore. I mean, he doesn't have the shield. It's like, he took the shield because that's my dad made that. It's like, you're right. Like, I mean, that whole thing, that that fight that between them and Iron Man and the money shot with Cap's shield and the fucking blasters. Oh, God. Snapshot, money shot that son of a bitch and make some memes or whatever out of it. It's just fantastic. And yeah, guys, I mean, I'm rambling on, round and on, rambling on. Sometimes not making enough sense. Scarlet Witch is nice. I mean, black. Some of the other characters are great. They still do their own thing. Vision are finally are awesome. Ant-Man works better in this movie than he did in his own. Though it makes me wonder if this will eventually go into the whole Ant-Man and Wasp thing. Like, he'll he'll go into... Come out of this one and going into the Ant-Man and Wasp movie. Smelling like a rose. So he's ripping ready to go. Ripping ready to go. I mean... I loved that. <sighs> Sorry about that again. But yes, guys, that's it. What did you guys think about Captain America Civil War? Did you love it? Did you hate it? How would you rate it? If you like this video, rock that like button with thrust if you must. Leave a comment below. Tell me what your thoughts are on the movie. And a good question is, so for topic... What is your favorite of uh, of all the MCU movies? I may put this up there in my top five for sure. If not top three. If not number one. I mean, number one, if not top three, if not, then top three, if not, then top five, pretty much. And nothing lower than that. It's pretty damn fucking good. And that's it, guys.
you know, as always, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. And I'll see you next time. If you smell what random rock and real wrists and reviews, Captain America, and the rest of Avengers in the MCU universe is cooking.